Hey guys, what's up? It's Marco, and today I'm going to do a TLDR for my top picks for 2016. It'll be three Marvel and three DC comics, and we're going to go down to Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. First off, I'm a really huge Spider-Man fan, and when Jerry Conway and Ryan Stegen got uh, their Renew Your Vows first and second and third issue out, it was amazing. <laughs> This whole year has been pretty lackluster for Spider-Man comics, like Amazing Spider-Man. It's not living up to its potential. Clone Conspiracy, is it's still coming out, so uh, the jury's still on that. Miles Morales, it's kind of lost its place. It, Miles has a really good um, spot in the Ultimate Universe, but taking him out of the Ultimate Universe and putting him into our universe, he's lost a little bit of his origin, and it's just not... Uh, how can you put this without sounding terrible? It's just not working. It should, on paper, make sense to put Miles with everyone else, but it's just not clicking yet. But hopefully it will. Renier Vows, on the other hand, that has been working from start to finish. It's not finished yet, actually, but from the moment Secret Wars was coming out, it was amazing. Now they're bringing it back, and it's still amazing. This is what Marvel should have been doing from the start. Marvel should have rebooted Peter Parker's history with uh, after Secret Wars, brought him back with Mary Jane, had the daughter, Annie Mae, and it would have been amazing. This is what Spider-Man has been missing for the past 10 years in comics. It's been missing the Mary Jane-Peter romance, and now introducing Annie Mae as their daughter, that makes a whole new dynamic. The family is, like, much... <laughs> it's the best Spider-Man story that I've read in a very, very long time. Marvel has been trying to shy away from the Peter and Mary Jane romance since like the 90s and have tried to break them up, divorce them, and they finally did it with one more day. They got magically divorced, so it's not legal, but whatever. But now uh, this whole family, uh, the Parkers, they are everything you didn't know you wanted from spider-man like i don't know if it's just because i'm older now and i would prefer a married peter parker story as uh this as a current continuity thing it's not current continuity 616 but it's something that i wish it was it's i'm tired of young peter parker always broke can't pay rent struggling mooching off of his friends harry and uh you know, Liz Allen, and Aunt May to some point, at some extent. By the way, this proves that after one more day, if they didn't make the deal, Peter would have gotten over it, because Peter says in issue two, like, Aunt May is gone now. Aunt May died after the first Civil War event. So this kind of just like, screw you one more day, Peter Parker could have gotten over the death of Aunt May and it would have been fine. They would have lived a happy life. They would have had a great daughter who is my new favorite character, my favorite new Spider-Man character. Forget Regent. Forget all these, like, really shitty Electro clones or whatever. Like, Annie Mae, that's where it's at. And that's all I got to say about Spider-Man. But moving on to Champions, this book is by Mark Wade and art by Humberto Ramos and the art's funky but the story is great <laughs> I can't stress how much that it, like how important it is to overlook the art because the facial expressions aren't really that great but the story here is the story is all the younger Avengers Miles Morales Kamala Khan uh, Sam Alexander Amadeus Cho Vivision and uh, young Cyclops they're all here, and they're forming a team to basically make a change for the Marvel Universe. Everything has been so gloom and dreary, and the superheroes have been fighting every major event. Like, it's superhero versus superhero, and they're tired of it. They've moved on. They're going to start their own team to try and change things for the future, and they're making a difference. Like, it's only four issues in, and they've probably done more good than the regular heroes have all year long. And that's amazing. I can't wait to see like what new members are going to join the team, whether it be uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, the new Falcon, the new Wasp, 
maybe even Gwenpool, which, by the way, that's the next book on this list. The Unbelievable Gwenpool by Christopher Hastings and art by, I'm going to butcher this, Gurihuriru. That's a very difficult name to spell and to pronounce. Uh, but Gwenpool is amazing. It is like classic Deadpool all over again because Deadpool recently has been getting more uh, serious. He hasn't broken the fourth wall as much. He hasn't made that many references. But Gwenpool is a character. Well, she's a person from our world brought into the 616, the main Marvel of continuity. And she's she has all this knowledge that other characters just don't. Like, she knows Jane Foster is Thor right now, and she uses that against her. She knows that certain characters have certain weaknesses, and she's treating it like she's living her comic book fantasy, but little does she know, like, uh, it's not great to be a villain all the time, and sometimes that will catch up to you. But this leads into our DC conversation. My first DC pick, Superman, American Alien by Mark, uh, by Max Landis, excuse me. And this is an amazing seven-issue run. It was so awesome. It's seven different stories from Clark Kent's history, and it's they, they don't even have to be in continuity. You could take it as it is, or you could like try and fit it into the continuity, but either way, it, it works pretty well. It's like if Clark Kent, like if you met Clark Kent at a bar and like got him really drunk, he might be talking about all these like these seven stories from his life like oh one time i got really wasted on on this boat and everyone thought it was bruce wayne like and i just partied all night with uh bruce wayne's friends and oliver queen and all of them or he could just tell you about that one time like he went to space and like bumped into a green lantern because he was having like this little teenage freak out they're very interesting stories uh you kind of have to flub with the Superman continuity a little bit. Like, he wasn't always this uh, patriotic symbol of hope. He was a kid until he grew up and became Superman. And these are all, like, before Superman stories. These are, like, the last issue ends with him fighting Lobo and, like, kind of becoming the Superman we know. And it was really great to see a young Clark Kent stories. And it's very fun. Leading up to... DC Rebirth, Superman. This is a story that I've wanted to hear from DC for forever. It's another married with kids kind of story. It's Clark Kent married to Lois Lane, and they have a son named Jonathan. Jonathan being half human and half Kryptonian, it's kind of a, it's uncharted territory for Clark Kent. He doesn't know how to raise a son. This is his first child, and it's also just, it's scary. Like, you feel the stress of being a parent. Like, Every time Jonathan is in trouble, you're hoping Clark can be there to save him because this kid's powers aren't, they're not to the power level that you would imagine Superman being at. He's a kid who can get concussions from falling out of a tree. He's not going to be able to fight dinosaurs or like alien gods from space. He gets boo boos. He like scrapes his knee. Like he has heat vision, but he can't fly. He has somewhat of a super strength, but. Superman has to be there to kind of guide and lead his son for the future. And there's a very, very interesting story between uh, Jonathan and Damian Wayne, the son of Bruce Wayne, Batman. And it's uh, it kind of leads into the Super Sons thing that we'll see this year. But it's, uh, it's a two-issue run that I'm... It was very fan service -y just to be like, these are the sons of Superman. Eventually, they'll take up the mantle. But for right now... They need, they're just two kids who can't stop, like, slapping each other around. For my final pick for DC this year, I'm going to have to go with DC Universe Rebirth Issue 1. That is just amazing. It's the first Rebirth issue we got. It was the 80-page DC Rebirth, and it brought back so many great things we wanted. We had... Uh, the death of Superman, the new 52 Superman, which brings us back to the classic Superman. We had the return of Wally West, uh, the the Teen Titans, the classic Teen Titans team. They now were reintroduced to Wally. He's back. Uh, Barry Allen, he, he and Bruce Wayne this year will investigate the Watchmen uh, kind of 
a little bit of a conspiracy. We don't know if Dr. Manhattan is involved, but we do know the Watchmen to some extent are involved with why the new 52 is here. Instead of our previous pre-Flashpoint continuity, they might have had a hand in this, and that was introduced in Rebirth, like Rebirth number one. And I'm really excited to see where Jeff Johns takes his story uh, in 2017 because it might be like a huge impactful event that will affect us for like the next five ten years for uh, dc and i can't say i can't express how excited i am for this new era of dc books like with superman being back like classic superman like we are not going to get that new 52 like brr, i'm so sad all the time or like i'm dating wonder woman it's uh the classic Lois Lane Superman, and it will be just amazing. You're bringing back Wally West, classic Wally West, so we're getting two different Wally Wests, and you're bringing back so many other classic characters or reintroducing them into the new 52 and trying to bring back as many older concepts while still making them feel new and fresh because you're introducing them to new ideas. It's like the best of both worlds. Fanboys, they get their old new readers get new stories and you just it's a melting pot of great great creativity and stories that can come out of this and i can't wait to see what dc is going to do with this all right guys that was it for my top three for each company the tldr i'm sorry if this one was just too long but hopefully the next one can be a little bit more managed i'll see you guys next time peace